The tools, they're in the red room. You don't know where the red room is? Well, after my review, I'll show you. <laughs> Welcome to Body Bags. I'm your Thursday reviewer, Chris, from Chris B Movies. You know my name is Chris, and you know I love B Movies. And just know, I don't own a red room. You can relax here. And I don't live on 112 Ocean Avenue in Amityville, Long Island, okay? Like this family in this movie does. Just letting you know. So, um, I'm getting reviewing a film that I don't own a physical copy of. Um, I own a physical copy of the first name of the film. And I was not aware of this film. I've seen most of the films in the Amityville franchise, but I was not really aware of this film. So we started on TV and we decided my wife and I would watch it for like a Halloween thing. And um, it's a pretty interesting film, I must say. There were a lot of things in the, in the film that I liked. There were some cheesy elements, but it really told a good story and really cared about the characters in this film. And that's all we really care about. Care about. Uh, it stars Jennifer Jason Lee. My wife actually looked at me at one point in time and said, Jennifer Jason Lee's not a good actress, is she? <laughs> but my wife told me to review this film, so I'm doing it for her. <laughs> and we're going to do Amityville The Awakening, a film from 2017, written and directed by Frank Calfor. What I liked about this thing is showed actual news clips in the beginning of the film of what Ronald DeFeo did and the detectives talking to the media about what actually happened, which I thought was really good additive to this film, especially right in the beginning of this film, so it starts to get you right in the mood. As if we didn't know already, but it was good to show actual news clips of what happened. So it was good that they actually um, found that and did that. And then there was a scene where Belle, we follow Belle's character in this film, uh, you know, she's going to a new school, she meets up with new friends. <laughs> One of the friends like, you live in that house. It's like all the kids knew that she lived in this house, so a lot of them stayed away. But this kid was really obsessed with the Amityville story, so he's like, oh my god, I have a copy of the original Amityville film. We could have watched it at a house at 3.15 a.m. So in the actual Amityville house, they actually watched the original Amityville film in the house. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> I did like it. And, you know, the kid was obsessed with the house and obsessed with movies and horror movies, so it was good to have that character in the film. Um, his name was uh, Terrence played by Thomas Mann, and I, I did like his character in the film. So, um, many of you who have watched the Amityville franchise may have seen this one already. Um, some of you may have not, but I'm going to review it anyway. Yeah. I had a fun time watching it. You know, it wasn't my favorite of the franchise, but, you know, I had a good time watching this one. And so it's a film who about a family who actually moves into the Amityville house. We follow Belle's life. Um, she's a gothic teenager, dresses up all in goth. And she has a brother who's in a coma, and she feels real guilty because her brother's in a coma for protecting her. A fight broke out, and something bad really happened, and he fell a long way down and ended up in a coma ever since. And, of course, with any twin, you have a connection to your twin, so you can feel the pain. And she just wants him to go. Um, she feels that there is no saving his life. He's just suffering, and, like, why prolong the suffering? Just let him go. Because, as a twin, like I said before, she can feel his pain, she can feel his suffering. But his, her mother, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, wants no part of it. She feels her son is going to get better. And that's why they move into the house, because it's closer to the neurologist, who, Kurtwood Smith, who's not a really positive individual. He really believes he's, he's never going to um, get James better. James will never get better. He feels like, because of the brain injury, he's just suffering. And so he feels the same that Belle feels. But the mother, Jennifer Jason Lee, will just not, Joan Walker will not let it go. She won't let it go. And she feels that he will get better. <clears throat> and then progressively in the film, he starts getting better. But he has evil forces in him due to the house, due to the evil forces that are in the house. And the evil forces are getting him better so that he can awake from his slumber and kill the family like Ronald DeFeo did, which I found a very interesting concept to the film because you know a kid who's dying and may not come out of it now is getting better slowly but surely in small little increments so that he can reach, so that he can be the male in the house that kills the family, um, which is the pattern in a lot of the Amityville films that were to come, uh, with two being an actual prequel to the first one. Mm -hmm. So it kind of moves in that Ronald DeFeo, what Ronald DeFeo did, the house possesses a kid, and now he's going to do it, because he's the male. Um, and so Belle is trying to stop him from doing that, and trying to bring him to his original state, so that he can die peacefully. Um, 
Because even at some point, James comes out of his slumber and says, help me, help me. These evil forces, get away from me. Move out of the house. Just get away from me. And then he tells his sister at another point, kill me, kill me. So you can kill the forces. That's the only way to stop it. So her, his sister knows, Belle knows that the only way to kill the forces is to actually kill him. And bring him to a point um, kind of away from the house where the evil will leave him. I guess in the film, there's a certain point where when he brings him away from the house at a certain um, distance away from the house, the evil forces will leave. But he ends up, spoiler alert, ready? Ready for this? He ends up dying at the end anyway. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is a fun film. I, I, I liked, I liked Bella Thorne's performance as the teen. She played a really good performance. Jennifer Jason Leigh was all over the place as she, but she played the James Brolin character. Just did a female version of him and he played it so much better <laughs> in the original film where she started just getting darker and darker and darker and darker and darker. And she was so happy when her son's getting, but look, he's all healed. Even though he was acting kind of really suspicious and not himself. Um... But she played a part that James Brolin played better in the original film. Um, Cameron Monaghan, who played James Walker, he did the best he could with what he had. Um, he got progressively cheesy as the movie came out. But he's a good actor. He played uh, the young kid Joker in Gotham. So I, I liked him in that role. And I did like him in this role as well. Um, <laughs> and he did the best he could with what he had. Uh, Juliet Walker is the younger of the sisters, very impressionable, very innocent. Um, when bad things are happening, she's actually really trusting of her brother, even though her brother is evil and she knows it, she still trusts him during certain points within the film because she just has that innocence about her. And I think she played it really well. Um, McKenna Grace played that part really well. Dr. Ken Milton is played by Kurtwood Smith and he's been a ton of films. He's a great actor and, um... Like I said, he did the best with the material he had. The narrator was Robin Atkin Downs in the beginning of the film when it starts showing actual news footage of what really happened in the house, and that was a good take. And um, Marissa and Terrence were um, Belle's friends from school, and they were also gothic as well, and Terrence was really into the whole real story of the Amityville house. <laughs> and, and like I said before, um, he actually had copies of the Amityville films, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> And actually on VHS, which I thought was... And they were watching the film in the actual house, which I thought was really good um, a take on the film. But yeah, it was a fun film. Um, it was a quick film, and it was not long at all. It was like an hour and a half. Um, never over welcome its day. It tried to build up to a big crescendo. Um, although, albeit kind of um, cheesy as the film progressed, there were a lot of things of, that were really cheesy in hell, but... I don't mind that, you know, why not? Um, definitely not that creepy, not that scary, I didn't think. <laughs> uh, just don't show it to young kids because they may get creeped out by it. But all in all, just a fun little Amityville film. We've seen a million of them. There's a zillion of them out there. And it was one I didn't know and just decided to watch it on TV. Um, I'm going to put this through the cheeseometer because it did have some cheesy elements to it. I mean, come on. Even the Amityville remake had some cheesy elements when the little girl was like, look, mommy, and he, she's on the roof. I started breaking out laughing during that. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to rate this one, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. I give it a good 7.5. I kind of really enjoyed it. My wife, who just hates most of the films that I watch and hates most horror films, said it was okay. She said it was all right. So it can't be too bad, right? So I give it a 7.5. It's definitely worth a watch if you've never seen this one and... You, you've watched all the other Amityville films, it's a good watch. So I would definitely check it out. You can check it out on TV, um, Amazon Prime. I'm sure Netflix has it as well. So yeah, check it out, man. Amityville The Awakening. And that's my review for this week. Next week, check me out. Uh, I've got more fun stuff to bring to the table. And check out all the other reviewers. They all do a bang up job. They're all passionate about what they do. And um, and there's a new review in each day of the week. Bring something different to the table. Yeah, but it's all horror, which means it's all a good time. So please check out all the other reviews. If you like, please like. And please subscribe to Body Bags and maybe Crispy Movies if you want as well. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your support. And tune in next week. And, uh...
I wonder if uh, some of you may have that <clears throat> red rum. <laughs> Later.